the unearthed terracotta army gives people today an idea of how the army of Qin Shi Huang conquered the other six states. Thanks to an invincible army, an epoch-making military strategic and tactics, Qin Shi Huang was able to unify China. In 1975, two letters from the Qing dynasty were discovered in a tomb in Yunmeng County, Hubei province. The letter writers, Hei Fu and Jing, were ordinary soldiers in the Qin army. Jing mentioned many people and wrote that he greatly missed his new wife. He also indicated he was desperate for money and clothes. He said his life was in danger because he had borrowed money from a man named Yuan Bo, who was now pressing him for repayment. Hei Fu sent greetings to his sister and some others, but said he missed his mother most. He repeatedly reminded his brother to take good care of her. He and one brother were away at war, and the third stayed home to take care of their mother. Hei Fu asked his mother for summer clothes as soon as possible. He said if local cloth was too expensive, she could send money instead. During the Ten-Year War, Qin Shi Huang mobilized about a million soldiers, which was around one-fifth of the five million or so people of Qin. According to one legend, after unifying the seven states, Qin Shi Huang selected the best of his soldiers and sent them to become part of his underground army as a reward. They were then covered with the wet terracotta and sent to the kiln. Each figure supposedly had a real Qin soldier as its core. This is why they are so unique and lifelike. Archaeologists found no bones inside the terracotta warriors, which disproves this legend. But we can reasonably assume that actual Qin soldiers were used as models. Hei Fu or Jing may even have been among the soldiers posing for the artists. As one looks into the faces of the terracotta warriors today, one can almost feel them breathing and hear their hearts beating from 2,000 years ago. After Qin Shi Huang conquered the other states, he reformed the central political system to protect his power. In the new system, there were three top-level ministers, a prime minister, grand commandment, and imperial secretary, and nine lower-level ministers under the emperor. The prime minister assisted the emperor with government affairs and managed all the other officials. The grand commandment was the supreme military commander. He had no military power in peacetime, answered to the emperor in wartime, and could only mobilize the army under the emperor's order, putting de facto military power in the hands of the emperor.
the imperial secretary, who was also the deputy prime minister, monitored execution of the emperor's orders among the officials. He usually forwarded orders to the prime minister to carry out. The nine low-level ministers under the top three level ministers each had specific duties. The newly created government system was responsible for administering the huge Qin Empire. On September 22, 2001, another burial pit was discovered near the mausoleum. The terracotta figures found there were completely different from the previous terracotta army. There were four terracotta chariot warriors in this burial pit. The hands on their outstretched arms seemed to be clenching the reins. Wooden vehicles and the bones of horses were also found in the pit. But it was unclear who was supposed to be riding in these chariots in the underground mausoleum of Qin Shi Huan. Archaeologists found 12 terracotta figures wearing a sort of crown in the pit. Some terracotta figures also carried a ceramic blade on their belt and a small, long, flat bag. Archaeologists speculate that the ceramic blade was for scraping bamboo slips. People used bamboo as stationery, and when they made a mistake, they scraped it off with a blade. The small bags may have been to carry flat stones used to sharpen the blade. Experts believe these terracotta figures were high-ranking civilian officials. The facial expressions of the civilian officials show confidence and dignity. Qin Shi Huang enjoyed patrolling his unified country. The grand fleet of chariots that accompanied him was meant to demonstrate his great power to his subjects. Qin Shi Huang was accompanied by a mighty fleet of 81 chariots. As the fleet started out from Shanyang City, a man who was watching could not help but blurt out, this is what a real man was born to be. He was Liu Bang, Emperor Gao Zhu, of the Han Dynasty, who would later overthrow the Qin Empire. He was greatly impressed by Qin Shi Huang's fleet. During a routine probing west of the mausoleum on October 3, 1980, archaeologists found rare bronze chariots and horses. These 
used chariots and horses, which weighed a total of 1,243 kilograms, were the largest bronze pieces discovered in the world in the 20th century. Their weight is equivalent to half the weight of real chariots and horses. It was the first time such luxurious and complete ancient bronze chariots and horses had ever been discovered anywhere in the world. The technology used to make them was unmatched for the time. The experts agreed that the driver and passenger of chariot number one would be standing, unearthed. This group of chariots was not the one in which Qin Shi Huang himself would ride. His chariot would be much more luxurious. Qin Shi Huang had his entire fleet of chariots in his underworld empire so he could carry out his inspection tours in the afterlife. Qin Shi Huang imagined that once he had absolute power, he would become the freest man in the world. Instead, he found that he had become a slave of absolute power that forced him to work day and night. The constant struggle to control his cunning bureaucrats and suppress revolts drained his energy. He became more and more dissatisfied with his fate, which only left him lonely and depressed. Qin Shi Huang began building grand palaces to relieve his loneliness. He believed that a palace was not only for enjoyment, but also to show his special status. He felt that, as the most powerful emperor, he should build the most magnificent palaces. To this end, he began carrying out massive construction projects in his capital of Xianyang. After conquering a state, Qin Shi Huang would have an artist draw a picture of the ornate royal palace and have a copy built in Shenyang. Shenyang Palace, where Qin Shi Huang lived, was located in the center of the palace complex like the moon surrounded by stars, all the palaces were filled with treasures. To liven up the palaces and make him feel less lonely, Qin Shi Huang had beautiful women captured from the other states perform songs and dances. But a great threat was looming. In spite of the majestic buildings, beautiful trees and flowers, and the beautiful women entertaining him, he could not allay his fears that death was stalking him. His great power may have impressed his people, but it meant nothing in the face of death.
May 1999, another burial pit was discovered southeast of the mausoleum. The pit contained very rare terracotta figures, but these figures were not soldiers. Their attire and poses were unlike any other terracotta figures seen so far. These figures looked more dynamic and lively than the terracotta warriors. Experts were unsure at first what these terracotta figures were supposed to represent. Archaeologists believe that their shapes and poses indicate that they were the acrobatic performers in the Qin Dynasty palace. A large bronze tripod vessel weighing 212 kilograms was unearthed in the pit. In ancient times, it was said a strong man should be able to lift a 250 kilogram tripod, about the same weight as the one unearthed. This vessel could have been used as a test of strength. The terracotta figure might be lifting it as part of a competition or performance. This figure holding a pole would also be part of the entertainment. There was a Qin Dynasty acrobatic performance called pole climbing, in which one person holds the pole and the other climbs it. The palace probably often staged such performances, so Qin Shi Huang replicated them in his mausoleum so he could continue to appreciate them in the afterlife. In China, acrobatics now refers to a variety of performances such as driving demonstrations, ventriloquism, walking on the high wire, the lion dance, and even magic shows. Acrobatic performances originated well before the Qin Dynasty, probably during the Neolithic Age. They had already become quite sophisticated by Qin Shi Huang's time. In the Shanxi Provincial Circus, traces of the Qin acrobatic performance Qin Shi Huang began building his underground empire when he was 14, during the second year of his reign. This was a Chinese imperial tradition, and work on the imperial mausoleum continued until the emperor's death. He inspected the mausoleum site a number of times. When he entered the palace, he would inevitably occupy after his demise, it gave him the creeps, in spite of the luxurious decorations. His rock-solid will could no longer sustain him in his lonely tomb. Death was the greatest threat to the emperor because it would mean the end of everything he cherished. He had to make his final battle against death itself.
In 1977, a group of burial pits was discovered southwest of the mausoleum. There were many poorly preserved bones in the pit, perhaps because of water in the pit. Archaeologists determined that they were from horses that had been buried alive. They were most likely Chinchir Huang's favorites. Some smaller squatting figures were unearthed that seemed smaller than adults. From their fresh faces, it appears their death is obvious. At the time, horses were the main means of production and transport. Burying so many horses alive must have greatly impacted the local economy. But the emperor didn't care. He wanted a huge group of horses to display his imperial glory in the underworld. The threat of death was almost too much for Qin Shi Huang to bear. He ordered a poet to compose prayers for his immortality. He declared, I envy the immortal and I want to be one. I'll call myself immortal. He also ordered musicians to accompany him wherever he went to comfort his spirit and proclaim to the heavens that he was an immortal so no one could let him die. In July 2000, more shocking news came from the emperor's mausoleum. Another burial pit was discovered 900 meters from the mausoleum's northeast corner. Dozens of bronze birds were unearthed. birds were found on both sides of a pond. Some were foraging for food and others were resting. The rare bronze pieces and the pond give the scene a mysterious air. Archaeologists were unsure of the meaning of this tableau, but they found it fascinating. In this same pit, 15 large terracotta figures were unearthed. Being of pond, birds, and music and dance performances are a mystery. Archaeologists believe that this pit represents a prayer for longevity. The cranes and swans are auspicious birds and together with the musicians, create a fairyland for the immortal soul. Qin Shi Huang brought his dream of heaven with him to the underworld.